Give me the move. Hello. Can you believe to learn? Learn. There we go. Can you believe to learn that my mic wasn't on? Oh, so it was just me talking. <laughs> <laughs> cool prank. I love that. It happened again. My mic is not on this other one. Let me let me add that. Give me one second. You got this. I like the um, the title screen you got there. Okay, there we go. Thank you for the compliments on my title screen. Yeah. Y yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've done it. We're here. I'm gonna sneeze. I'm gonna sneeze. I sneezed. I sneezed. I'm gonna share the screen with you, Nathan. Share the screen with me. Share our faces with the with the class. With the people. There we go. Hi, everyone. My name is now Jacob Andrews, according to Zoom. Um, there we are. There we are. Look at us. We're doing it. Who would have thought? It's happening. Yeah. Um, it's a very early draw class, but that's because we're taking some time off. We're taking some us time. We're taking some us time as a, as a group. It's important. Yeah. It's what you need. Um, I've got to make a billion thumbnails gotta make a billion th nathan's gotta make a billion thumbnails i have I gotta to make, make a million assets i have to make 10 thumbnails good golly good golly gee whiz that's too but many i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it it's gonna be good i they're probably gonna look pretty similar to how they looked when we originally released draga yeah i mean they were nice so they were pretty nice they're pretty uh, nice i might you know, change up the font. Where's my drawing glove? Oh, my drawing glove is in my sweatpants pocket. I'm going to steal Jacobs. I've you got this. Jacobs. Just go, just go glove free. Let that, let the, let the hand grease flow onto your canvas. Perspective is serious business. I need, yeah. whoop, I need, well, I need all the help I can get. Oops, I full screened. Hold on. How did I do this? There we go. Uh, my microphone hit one of the F buttons and full screened without any way of getting out of it, the, the YouTube. I'm excited uh, for this one because I remember learning about perspective for like traditional drawing, but I, I don't really know how to do it good did with digital yeah i would imagine it's like easier in some ways but it's like it is easier i think on digital um i will try to teach it how to do it both ways as best i can awesome. um i think a lot of people say like you know because i'll I use this cheat and it's a, what a lot of artists do for digital which is um uh, that i use the pen tool and yeah. i just anchor one part and i'll move the other one around and so basically the uh yeah teach me how to do that yeah i'll do that uh the the translation for that in traditional is if you take a ruler and you just put like your finger on one point of the ruler and then just swivel it from that point yep you i know? remember doing that yeah it's a lot of that there's also a thing that a lot of artists do or that i've seen uh less commonly actually is that if you have like a really wide drawing surface and your perspective is like way out here or something, some people will put a little tack with a string around it. Yeah. And then they'll swivel that string and then that's the line. But yeah. it's not as like rigid, so you're gonna get some looser lines, but it still works just as well. So um, let's talk about perspective. Let's talk about it. Let's I'm talk ready. about it. I'm gonna show some examples um, I'm sure that everyone has like a basic knowledge of perspective, like what makes, you know, a one point, a two point, a three point, but I'm going to show some examples and then I'll show you how you can do that using those examples. And I could show you how to do it freehand and I'll show how you would go about doing, uh, a drawing from like a sketch. 
which is like I'll basically show my process for like how I would do like a draw detectives background, you know. So Great. let's start off the easiest one, uh, which is one point. One point perspective means that there's one angle that everything is going to. Uh, someone who famously likes to use it a lot in movies is Kubrick. Kubrick loves a one point. Yeah. So you see that all of, let me pull out. All them lines going towards that middle. Yeah, all these lines are kind of converging, like, you know, to here. Yes. So this would be your vantage point. So. Van, 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 vantage point. Van vantage point. Van vanter point. I always, I learned it as vanishing point. Yeah, vanishing point, vantage point. I think both of them work. Cool. Um, but basically, if you just go out from here, all of your lines will meet there. And then that's where you can also find your horizon line, is if you yep. go to the center of that and you go horizontally. So, you know, it's pretty high up in this one. But so yep. everything above that line will point down. Everything under that line will point up. Um, OK, let's look at another example. Um, this one I thought was an interesting example because it's still one point, but it seems pretty flat. Right. Yeah. Where's the point? The point is still pretty dead center. It's like here. Oh yeah. Because you have all these lines. There's that, there's that wall in the way, and but there, yeah, if you look yeah. at the, yeah. So there's that wall, but if you just follow like, so it's probably around here. Uh, so if you follow all of these points you would get, you know, this point, even like this yep, would go yeah. back into it. Yep. yep, uh, yep this yep. wall is going, you can barely see this wall, but it's here. And then you can follow these, you know, they all go back to that point. Um, uh, I forgot what this movie is called, so I labeled it as that divorce movie. That 70s movie. That 70s movie. That so, divorce show. That divorce show. Um, it's called it's called Marriage Story, which is like oh. pretty pretty close. It's like <laughs> you know, divorce is a step of marriage, I suppose. It's the it's the step in yeah, it's it's mostly about the divorce is my understanding. I haven't seen it. I also haven't seen it. All I've seen is the the Adam Driver meme of him punching a wall. Every day I wake up and see Adam Driver punching a wall. <laughs> so this one I thought was an interesting example because it is one point, but they do a composition trick that I think is very nice, is that you're telling two sides of a story here. So because your vanishing point is um, in the center here, it's kind of behind this pole. Oh, yeah, they put the pole right there, and it's like... Yeah, which is saying, like... They've divided... Yeah, that's, they've divided that's using space. perspective to it's, as storytelling. Yeah, it's that's using cool. perspective as storytelling. And it's also like kind of doing a, a comic book thing where like, you know, we could say this is a panel, you know? Yeah. Like these are two panels of a story, which I thought that's was interesting. A, that's just some good composition yeah. right there. And mm. th some, some mm. very good... Love that composition. Love that composition. Some very good graphic... Uh, or or uh, comic artists will kind of use this thing where they have multiple frames, but it's actually one scene, and, and it is very effective in a in a storytelling sense. But you know, hiding that per that vanishing point behind that sort of like break, yeah, is very good. Um, Skyfall. Talking about my composition. Thank you, Matt Hattrick. That's very good. <laughs> very good. Um, this one is also like a looser one. There's less like walls pointing to a thing and more just like, you know, the general shapes. I mean, this is definitely pointing this yep. table. And what it's doing is it's drawing your attention to uh, James Bond here. John Mr. Bond. Bond. Which uh, Bond movie is this one? Skyfall. This is Skyfall. I love Skyfall for... Uh, it shots. It, it has some really beautiful uh, compositions in it. 
Um, I love Skyfall for the Dench. Dench is great. I There's love Skyfall some... also for the Adele. A lot of, a lot of good Dench yeah. in Skyfall. There is a lot of good Dench in Skyfall. Um, but yeah, the vanishing point would be kind of like at the center of, you know, James here. Yeah. The center of the James. Center of the James. So again, that means the horizon line would be here. Mm -hmm. Just about. Which is fun, because then you have this wall kind of hitting that horizon line, which is probably accidental, but if you really want to read into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say it's not. And here's an interesting example. Oh, that's a that's an inception. This is an inception. So this is still uh, one vanishing point. Yeah. Because it's going down this hallway. It's just that back wall is very close to us. So if you were to follow, you know, all of these lines here, you would find the vanishing point. Uh, follow this. Yeah, somewhere it's somewhere in uh, in his in, booty. In, yeah, in, <laughs> in the Joseph booty. Gordon Levitt's butt. Yeah, the vanishing all point lines. is in Jason Gordon Levitt's butt. Did I call Converge. him Jason? You did call him Jason. I wasn't going to call it out, but you did. So. Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Jason Jason Gordon-Levitt. Jason Gordon-Levitt. His stunt double. <laughs> his alter ego. Yeah. Um, But yeah, just because the room's rotated doesn't mean that it's, you know, more than one uh, perspective. I mean, if you were to just rotate this, you could see that it's... Yeah, there it is. Still... That's probably what it looked like. Yeah. When they were actually, there it is. Filming. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, so, I mean, these carpet actually lines. I don't know really how they did too. those shots. I did think they, they had a giant... rotating room. They made they made the whole room rotate. That's cool. I believe so. That's awesome. So this. Good for them. All of these lines also kind of point you to where this vanishing point was. So if you were to follow all of these, it would give you to. Yeah. Your vanishing point, but. Um, another example, uh, Hill House. Let me unrotate myself. <laughs> there we go. Whoa. One point perspective is really good for drawing attention to a character or really good for kind of like making you feel kind of like caged in, in like a hallway scene. Yeah. Leads um, the eye in. Yeah. Because also, uh, and this is another composition trick. I know that's not what we're covering today, but like, if you want the big obvious thing to be here, like, uh, that's <laughs> what you should be doing. Like the bathroom sign. Like the bathroom sign. Um, uh, because all of these diagonals are literally like pointing like, Hey, look at this. And you naturally want to look down that hallway. So yeah. if you wanted to sneak something in, like how Hill House may or may not do, you would maybe put someone like here. And then the, you're not going to look at it right away, but then later. But then later yeah. you'll see it. Yeah. That's or you'll want to tuck someone here or, you know, just hide someone that's not in this, you know, kind of spot. <laughs> just reading, reading chat, Jamie's updating us on the, the status of uh, uh, the cat. Coming to, coming to get the chicken. Nice. They're eating some chicken. Cat's coming in mm -hmm. to get the chicken. Good. The cat has entered the room. It was Please. outside the room. Now it's in the room. Please keep me updated. So let's talk so you about... Could, you could, you know, you could design a whole room where uh -huh. the cat's in the foreground and the chicken is at the vanishing point and all the lines are leading... Towards that's the true let's do that so let's have uh one vanishing point let's have it be here mm -hmm. so let's draw our horizon line so how yeah. you would do this digitally through photoshop is you're going to take out your pen tool which is p on the keyboard i'm going to draw long um, did I'll I draw Google along. key terms for these examples or do you just know and remember them? I remember them. Just because I Julia's studied. Julia's just got the, she's got the eye. I got the eye. I'm actually going to move this down a little bit. Just. We're just putting that like right, right in the middle. 
Yeah, I'm right putting it a little a little south of the middle. A little south of the middle. Okay. Yeah. Right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna draw along because I I like to. Yeah. I like to do that. Okay, so we're using the pen tool because I don't know how to do a bunch of stuff with the pen tool. So I'm excited to learn about the pen tool. Yeah, the pen tool is, um, I think a lot of people find it uh, intimidating, but it's not yeah. if you have the right settings on, because then it won't do things without you telling it to. Okay. Um, on your pen tool at the top here, Yeah. it should say path. Yep. Okay, cool. So if you put a dot at but the center. Okay. I can't see it because I've turned everything blue. My yeah, line you is used, blue. Yeah, we used the, the, the... I apologize. <laughs> it's the same color. Well, there we the... go. Okay. Um, so your pen tool. Yeah. Then if you were to draw another one, just click uh -huh. once, put it somewhere else. There it is. There you go. So on your keyboard, mm -hmm. if you hold control, you should get a little white arrow. A little white cursor. Okay, it's command command on Mac. Okay, it's command it's on the Mac. the white arrow. Control gets the, the black arrow. So if you Mac. take that second point mm -hmm. and you click and hold on that, mm -hmm. that white cursor, with that white cursor, mm -hmm. you can swivel it around. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So that's what you're going to do for okay. how you do perspective. So let's, I'm gonna do in a different color, I'm gonna draw an object using, you know, I'll just use black. So I'm gonna draw, let's do the very basic square sitting on the horizon line, more or less. Okay. Like with it. The basic square sitting on the horizon line. Yeah, like sitting with the middle of it going through the horizon line. Sure. Right? I'll draw so that. now, if you take, to... let me know when you're done. And uh, to get to get those, um, those like perfectly straight lines in Photoshop when you're not using the pen tool, it's just you hold shift. Yes. So if you have your, your pencil or your brush out, if you click and then you press shift, you can go yeah. anywhere you want. It, becomes a straight line it makes the it makes the line straight for you okay i got it yeah i've got my box cool you got your box so if you take this anchor and you click and hold it now you know if you have the correct anchor selected if that one is filled in blue if it is just the white on the inside then you do not have it selected which is good because right. you only want to move that one point because mm -hmm. you want to anchor this because that one is uh, anchored to the center. Someone just asked if, if um, how to do this manually. Uh, like I said, the pen tool is that you put a ruler there and you can hold it to that point and just swivel it. Like yeah. mark on your... You gotta, you gotta get a little ruler that you you feel comfortable pressing up against your tablet. Yeah. You know what? I have one. Let me go grab my ruler. Make sure it's clean. <laughs> Doesn't have any... So. rough bits but yeah this is how this is how i learned it back have, in the day i have my ruler here nice so i also do believe it's the same commands for illustrator someone's asking i have my ruler here oh Yay. apparently procreate has an assisted drawing mode that will make straight lines along your perspective grid Yes, it does. But this so is for you if you don't have that. If you just wanna, if you just wanna do it, if you just wanna feel. So I'm gonna try. Don't wanna to let show the computer you. do it for you. If you hold, look at that. If you hold your ruler here. Mm-hmm. And then you can just swivel it. Yeah, you just gotta make sure you you're you're checking yeah, as you, you swivel. Yeah, you keep those edges lined up, so you can then put that there and just line up those points. See that? There and you go. Rotate. That's how you would do it traditionally. And you would just draw, you would just trace it, trace your, your stylus along the edge of the ruler. Yeah. Yep, yep. Okay, so then 
either what you can do in Photoshop or your your traditional drawing is if you want the perfectly straight line, you can either tell your path tool to draw along that line, which is then if you have your layers palette up, usually there's a tab next to it that's like channels, and then there's another tab that says paths. Yeah. Okay, if you go over to paths, mm -hmm. see you see your little work, work path here. If you want path. to save this as your center one because you can accidentally delete a path, um, mm -hmm. you can just rename it. Um, I'll rename it. I usually what do like one it? point. One. One point. One point. So, um, if you have whatever tool you're using, um, it usually defaults to using the brush tool when it does a stroke. But if you want it to tell, if you want to tell it to use something else, like I always want it to use pencil. So I'll take out my pencil tool and then I'll press this second button here, which is this. Uh, circle, this outline of the, the circle. outline circle, not the yes. fill circle. And then you should get a stroke there. Okay. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then, so if you you're on you're on your pencil or pen tool, and then like you can adjust the it'll it'll stroke at whatever um, size you have. Yes. So like if you want a real fat stroke. Yeah. You just up the size. If you want a real thin stroke. And then you can yeah yeah then you make yeah, it smaller. yeah yeah okay okay so then um so i clicked uh in this like gray space here under the point just so it can go away so i can look at it uh to bring it back you could just click it again and it'll bring the line back you'll notice there's no anchor points but if you take the pen tool and you get that white cursor again and you click and drag over yep where one of those anchors wow. is you're gonna get I that point not... back I thought once it was gone, it was gone forever. Thank you, Julia. I, did, I didn't know how to do that. <laughs> no problem. Um, so yeah, then you know you just repeat the process. So you click and drag to go to the bottom. You take mm -hmm. out your brush or your pencil or whatever drawing implement you're using, and then you can click that that stroke. Oh my God, Julia, you're changing my life. This is how I did all of the draw detectives. Was that I would do the sketch and then I would do this. So then, you know, Amazing. for this back wall, you just decide wherever for, you know, however deep you want this box to be, you can do that. Looks like a sideways house. Sideways house. A little gnome house. So there you go. And now it's a box. And Look at that. Now you have a box in 3D space. Just erase those extra lines. Yeah. You don't need them anymore. You don't need them anymore. You still have your pen path saved. Look at that. That's wow. Look at that. So then um, let's do one below the horizon line just for an example. Um, I'll also use my ruler for people who are maybe drawing traditionally and for don't sure. want to do all of the Photoshop hubbub. I got my yeah. ruler. I'm lining it up with this center vanishing point here, mm -hmm. and I'm lining it up with this corner, and I'm going to draw back to the circle there, to that dot, to the vanishing point. Yeah. Oh my gosh. See? And just then... knowing, just knowing the shortcuts is so nice. Knowing the shortcuts makes it so much quicker. I actually this don't is... know how to not use it. This is shortcuts. incredible. And do you still, oh my gosh. Okay, so if you're. Basically the only way that you can mess up the path is if you have an anchor point selected and you press delete or backspace, then it will delete yeah. that anchor. And I just noticed that even even though I currently have my brush tool selected, when I, when I hold down uh, command and I'm over the, the anchor point, it, mm -hmm. it still turns into the little white arrow. Yes. So that's that's good. That saves time yeah. as well. Yeah, it's very good. So this is a box underneath the, the vanishing, or underneath the horizon line. So yep. this is like underneath you, you know. You can so, see the top of it. Because now you can see the top of it. So you want to connect those corners back. 
if this were a, if this cube were a see-through cube, then you would you know go all the way back and then you would go across and all that jazz. Right, right. So then, if we want to close this box off, this I'm starting off with some real, real, real basics, um, just in case, because I, I think know that's that. Good. Yeah, I know that perspective is very scary for people. Um, and we're just going to repeat the process for the top here. We get this room full of boxes. Oh, another thing you can do in Photoshop. What is this? The room I'm in right now? Yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. Uh, <laughs> another thing you can do in Photoshop is if you click once at a corner and then you hold shift and then you click at the vanishing point, it'll make a straight line. You don't have to hold it. Oh. Yeah. So if you click. Oh. oh. <laughs> so if you click this uh, you know, bottom left corner of this cube, you click once. You hold shift, you click the vanishing point, it goes back. Wow. It is a perfect straight line. That's cool. Yeah, I use that one a lot too. Yeah, the shift the shift click. Yeah. So, you just have to make sure you're not holding shift before you do the first click or you're gonna end up with some, some extra lines. Some wild times. Someone's making tea. Yep, it's tea time. I'm for this. It's tea time, baby. I got myself a pomegranate raspberry tea. A little palm raz. A little palm raz. So let's do um, kind of kind of how I would do a room with the intention of having a one point perspective. So for example, I drew this room using one point perspective, right? It's beautiful. Thank you. So I had. Um, I mean, you can tell where the vanishing point is because of these brick lines yeah. and this and all of these, you know, horizontal lines. So I'm going to go back to my horrible green. I'm going to make it a little less horrible for the purposes of this. But let's say I have a <laughs> horrible green, <laughs> a horrible green. Let's say I want to do a hallway scene. So I'm going to loosely sketch like, OK, whoop, I took off the size sensitivity. Let's say, you know, I have the end of the hallway here, maybe a little bit smaller, actually, just for the purposes of this. Um, sure. So this is like how I puzzle out how to draw like the room. And you're not even using shift for for that to start. You're just sort of drawing yeah, just in. just sketching. Just roughing it. Yeah, I'm going to make it, it a little in. bit smaller so that we can get a better example. And then let's say, you know, I want it to be vanishing point here, so I'll just eyeball it. I'll go, yeah, okay, this is this is a hallway. So then I want like a door here. I want um, maybe a window here. Um, it's like know, one another... of them Scooby-Doo hallways where they yeah. keep going in the different doors and coming out. Oh, you know what, actually, this is gonna be spooky paintings. Oh, very Scooby good. Scooby Doo. Little paintings where the eye holes pop out and they, they follow you. Yeah. Oh, also, if you want it to be like a hallway that turns a corner at the end, basically what you would do is that you would move these up or down. So erase these horizontal lines and move them in. And that gives that illusion of there's more right. space behind it. Yeah. Or what you would do if you want it to like turn a corner but not go left or you want it to go one direction, you would. Uh, keep going through to this back line. Yeah, so it touches there, but there's yeah. more space on the other side. So that you get that curve illusion, or not curve, but like that hard corner illusion. Yeah. So um, some, some molding, of course, because it's me. Let's have this door be open. You know, we would erase that. Maybe there's another room. So this is like how I would puzzle out a draw detective's room. So, so basically, I... your like your lines are either gonna be like straight vertical, straight right. horizontal, or going to the vanishing point. Right. There's always going to be one that's. I mean, for one point, there's always going to be one, one point, that's like yeah. perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, even in the case of the inception room, again, if you just rotate the thing, then you get your horizontals. Like, let me hide this and see 
you have these lines are perfectly horizontal and these are perfectly vertical. Yep. So with that in mind, let's actually draw the dang room. Because you see that like this thing is wonky. It's doing like a whoop. And you know, the perspective isn't like perfect, but it's eyeballed. So what Ooh. we're gonna do Citrus Death with, with some good terms. What's going on? It's about the parallels. Yes. Height and width are normal parallel, but depth is converging parallel. Yeah. So um let's draw this. I don't know if you can hear our little mop robot. I do hear it. It's doing stuff. It's doing its song. He's he's singing a song. He's doing, he's doing his song. dance. Yeah. So I'm he's drawing... he's a cube. He's a little cube he, in space. Is he a little cube? Yeah, he's a little cube. I I figured he'd be a little, a little Roomba circle. The Roomba is round. The the Brava is cube. Is a little little oh, cubey. Oh, okay. Get to get in those tight corners. Um. It, yeah. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. So uh, to go backwards a little bit. Um, you know, the sketch is very loose. So what we're going to want to do is kind of see a common ground that we like. So I'm actually going to create a few pen lines to kind of find this vanishing point. And again, what you would need to do there is you can either take a piece of, um, tracing paper, um, some sort of like clear paper and you can lay it on top if you don't want to like put lines all over your drawing already. Yeah. Um, and then you can take a ruler and kind of just see, you know, the median of where everything is. So I don't have tracing paper, just, you know, use regular printer paper and hold it up to a window or something. Yeah. You can with, do it over a window. Um, you can have a light box, put a yeah. hold it up to a lamp. So, uh, to get multiple pen lines at once. Uh, you draw your first pen line, and then again, get that white cursor, click anywhere once, and now those anchor points are deactivated, which means that you're not going to go back to them unless you click one of those anchor points. So you can start a new line. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to try to see what... Yeah, see what you try and make sense of like the sketch and like make it actually be perspective. This is the step that I often skip <laughs> on dropping. Yeah. I'll just be like, close enough. <laughs> because it's like these these two look nice, like kind of converging here. So yeah. then you would need to angle it, that one. Yeah, down if I more. anchor this where those two lines have met, then my ceiling line is a little more harsh, which like yeah. okay, cool. So um, if, so if you're drawing traditionally, you would put like a little X there, or if you're drawing not on Photoshop, you put a little X, you put a little indication that, you know, that's where the vanishing point is mm -hmm. on Photoshop. What you can do is you can use the Photoshop version of rulers, which you can either go to window, uh, like show or view. It's like view rulers. That's what it is. I usually just use command R. Uh, so this pops up. So nice. what you can do is if you click and drag outwards, you get a little guide. You get a little guide. And you can put that right there for your vertical line. And you can click and drag from that top ruler and bring it down. That's how I always mark my vanishing point point in case I accidentally delete my pen anchor points. Yeah. Which always I good to have do a all backup. the time. Yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah, it's absolutely going to happen. And sometimes I'm so zoomed in that I'm just like, you know, bringing up the cursor and dragging that anchor point. But then sometimes what I don't notice is that I'm dragging the whole line and then I feel like that line is really wonky. And then I'll zoom out and I'll see that my whole perspective line is like completely south. Mm -hmm. So just having this ruler guide up helps me a lot uh, as a backup. Yeah. So let's. Um... I oftentimes will like, you know, I'm 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 going through everybody's PSDs uh, to like find images to use for thumbnails or like post to Instagram or whatever. And oftentimes when I open yours, Julia, there will be just like many guide guidelines yeah. up. 
I love a guideline. The guidelines are good. The guidelines I should, are good. I should use them more. They're Maybe I will. Helpful. I Maybe that'll be my, my 2021 resolution is to use guidelines more. To use guidelines. I'm just going to put um, the molding here. And again, I'm doing this very hastily just so that we can move on to the two point and the three point and then, you know, we'll get into some wackier stuff. But and then Julia, when when you're done with the guides, how do you how do you get rid of them? So if I don't want to see them momentarily, um, if I find them distracting, which sometimes I do when I have a million lines on my page, you can hit a uh, Control H to temporarily hide everything that isn't a drawn line. Cool. Um, it's probably probably Command H. Yeah, probably Command the, H. Uh, on let me let me just let me just double check that. So it was uh command r to show the rulers nope mm -hmm. that's not it there it is is okay. it okay okay it is command r and it's then command r. make a guide and then it and should then be command h command h would you like to use command h to hide yes hide extras yes you're hiding it your gives extras. It, it gives me the option that's fun i have turned off the option because i click it on and off all the time i'm always toggling it because also if you use the marching ants uh, and you don't yeah. want to see them, you can use Command H yeah. to not see them for a moment. Apparently, you have the option of, of it either hides the extras or it can hide your whole Photoshop. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, you but know. But then, if you want to get rid of them permanently, you can either go to View Clear Guides or you can just take them and drag them off, off like, to the side and it'll just get rid of them. Yeah. Um, okay. So then... I'm just establishing like where a door would be. And then you can also go to view show uh, under show, it like lists stuff and you can like turn stuff on and off there. Yes. I think. Show guide. View. Show guide, this is just and then TV you know, it'll either have a little check or a little minus. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, you can do all this. You can do all this stuff if you don't want to remember all the key shortcuts. You can. There's there's always a way to do it through the menus. Yeah, there's also a thing um, for if you want depth to be measured accurately for like for scaling purposes like uh for example these doorways what you can do and this is some real picky brain bs that i'm assuming not many people are going to do but i like knowing it kinky brain picky brain garbo so what you do? Oh, the X trick, yeah. Yeah. So you I love measure, the X trick. Yeah. So you measure the space with this. You put the uh, X in the center, and then what you do is that. Well, let me save this one point again. A I remember. Um, yeah, when I learned the X trick back in back in the day. Yeah. I was like blew my mind yeah so what you do is that you anchor it to one of the back points one of the the further points away from you and you draw a line that hits that center and that crosses that closer horizontal line and that's going to be your further x so that's how you get a, an accurate measure of that space yeah. Coming towards you. And you can keep keep making the X's. Yeah, you just keep repeating. And so each of each of those boxes is gonna be the same yeah. the same size if it, if you were actually in three D space looking at it. Yeah. Um So it's this is a real this, this is a real is dramatic a real, you don't have to you don't have to do this point, but if you were looking to to get just real accurate, yeah, this is what you can do. But this is, you know, again, some real real dramatic stuff. Yeah. 
Uh, but that's how you would accurately measure the space. Um, anyway, you that... want to make sure all those doors are equidistant apart. Yes, exactly. I just did that for a background that I'm drawing, uh, which I cannot show yet. <gasps> but everyone will see it eventually. <gasps> I'm so excited. I think I know what you're talking about, but I'm not going to spoil it. I do think you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is this is some real, you know, eyeballed stuff. But um, this is how you would do one point perspective. Does anyone have any questions about one point so far, or should we move on to two? Yeah, questions time. Everyone's good. Gonna give it a moment. Give it a moment. There's a bit of a delay. Hope everyone's having a good Friday. I put it on Twitter. I did not put it on Twitter. Mwahaha. Ultimate you've just, secret. You've just put so many process drawings on Twitter that have perspective that any one of them could be. I love perspective. But this is this is a secret. This is a secret. Um, okay. Okay, think, cool. So let's Yeah. And let's if, if you have a question later, just ask it. I'll uh Yeah. I'll I'll try and keep an eye on chat. So, you know, we can always come back to stuff. Yeah. Um, Two-point perspective. Used a lot of the time for the outside of buildings. Yeah. Uh, yesterday in a rant to Jacob, I called two-point perspective the most boring perspective, and I think I've changed my mind on that, but it is still pretty boring to me. <laughs> Here's the practical magic house. Two-point perspective. It's basically like a thing rotated in space, so you get you get it going like in two different directions to show depth. Um, two so, point is the farthest I ever made it in perspective. I was like two point, got it. I mean, everything only is going to have two points. For most then, things, you only need two points. Yeah, but then or you one. get into three and four point, and it's like ooh. I am going to go over three point in a bit. Ooh. So we see in this image, you know, the top of this roof going back, this going back, mm -hmm. this going back into space, uh, this one going to that back perspective line. Uh, but then we see these parts going going off to the left here. What are right? they doing? Where are they going? Are you they, got, going? They, they got their own vanishing point they're going to? Listen, the, the party is broken up. Wow. It, they're going in their own different directions. They're doing it. It's like, oh, sorry, we're going this way. We're, we're going this way. There we go. So that's two-point perspective. Um, another example, my Ooh. favorite movie of all time, The Fall. I picked this example uh, on purpose more than just because it's my favorite movie, but also because I thought it was really interesting use of two-point perspective. I've because, never seen The Fall. Do they fall down all those stairs? Um, there is a lot of falling in the movie. Wow. But um, it's imagining bumping your butt on all those stairs that you fall down. Ow, 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 oh, oh, seeing Lee ow, Pace ooh, bump ooh, his way down these stairs. Ooh, ah. <laughs> so um, this is two-point perspective. Um, because we have the camera it's looking down a pit which means that one of the vanishing points is going in and away from us so that means that this this is all going downward mm -hmm. and I, I recognize that we're in a space that's kind of formed like a, a cone but even beyond that we have you know these little pillars going towards or pillars. Uh, a perspective line that's down there. Because again, we're looking over a thing. Like all of these, all of these little things are <laughs> going towards a point that's down. <laughs> so we have those. And then we have these, all of these stairs are that, pointing. That flat edge, yeah. This way. So they're all going uh, that way. So the vanishing points for those are like way off the the yeah. canvas. I mean, you would. So let's actually puzzle it out. So uh, the best way to figure out what a vanishing point is in a shot or a drawing 
is to use the longest straight edge you have uh, because mm -hmm. you have more information there. So if we were to take this point, anchor it here, make another anchor, you know, we get... It's going. We got that, and then we there got... There it goes. We got this. And this one... So where they converge. Yeah, where they converge. And you definitely want to get more than two... Um, samples, I guess, if we're yeah. to use sort of like a scientific a more a more sciencey term but a yeah. larger sample size a larger sample size see because it's like a little bit higher than what i was thinking mm -hmm. so it's probably like yeah 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 so there it's it like somewhere yeah, so around here way way over there and if they're like not all meeting at the exact same correct place Remember that these things have, especially this place, this place uh, is this famous place in India. Um, it's been around for a very long time, so it's been weathered, it's been beat up, things shift, it's in the earth, so, you know, things get jostled around, but it'll go to a basic point. Um, so let's get rid of that. So let's figure out where these, where this bottom point is, and this one's going to be a little bit harder but it's like, because again, it, it's going to be on the same horizon line. And this point, the horizon line is kind of vertical, but. A vertical horizon. A vertical horizon line. A Verizon. A, a Verizon wireless. Uh-huh. <laughs> Julia's doing all the, the work, and I'm just over here free associating. Hi, Jacob. Hi, hi Jacob. Hi everybody. Enjoy, Nathan says hi. Enjoy your lesson. Enjoy your big lesson. I forgot to say to everyone. Um, hey, thanks for being a patron. Oh yeah, for absolutely. The draw class. Thank you yeah. For being a mm hmm We do Thanks, appreciate Jacob, your same. support. Yes. And uh, we hope these classes are worth it to yeah. you. Yeah. I hope so. We try to make them um, things that we see people struggling with a little bit. Yeah. Um, another two points, Spirited Away. Ooh. So Ghibli does um, a thing where they cheat perspective. They'll do this theory, and I forget what the theory is called, but they have a um, kind of like a- cheaters. A cheating circle. This isn't an example of it. There's a, an example of from uh, my neighbor Totoro. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, uh, but, 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 but. There's like something when they're in the house and uh, if you look at the perspective, they're like not going to one vanishing point. They're going to like within this like guesstimation circle. Uh, and there's a theory name for that. I don't remember what it is though. Okay. Um, well, that's that's homework. That's homework for you. Figure it out. Oh, I found it. Class. Never I found mind. It. Never mind. Homework. Homework has been canceled. Homework is canceled. So let me get this image. Open image. <laughs> Copy. Okay. All right. So here here's the cheating one. Oh. So there's oh. like, it's to like cheat the room to be a little bit bigger to show um, that the kids are like really small in this big grandeur, almost dreamy place because um, it doesn't actually make. Yeah, wow, that's so, cool. So it doesn't make perfect sense. And also um, the way that uh, like the human eye processes things sometimes doesn't go. I mean. Jacob and I were having this discussion last night where it's like novice is not knowing the rules, but getting the feel. Um, uh, apprentice is someone who knows all the rules, but is missing that feel. And then a uh, master is someone who knows all the rules and is able to hit that feel. And I feel like this is an example of it where they know how to cheat it just a bit where yeah. if you were to look at it, you don't notice anything wrong. 
they're breaking like, the rules on purpose. They know the what the rules, rules are. They're trying to achieve a specific thing, so they are able to selectively break the rules in a way that achieves that. Yeah, exactly. And looks like it makes sense. Yeah, it's that's so, it, so cool. Yeah, they they do such a nice job of it. They really obviously know what they're doing, um, and it's it's really cool. So like. But in order to get to this phase, you need to know... You need to know why, yeah. Yeah. You need to know why you're doing that and what what the rules are that you're breaking. Yeah, Yeah. but then if you stick too straight to rules, then everything is too straight, perfect, pristine, and it's missing that... Sometimes you you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what makes art kind of relatable is the fact that sometimes it's a little... Not like messy, but like it it has that human touch. It's not like a, a robotic, like you know it's a thing it's a trick yeah art is a trick you're you're taking something that's Mm three-dimensional and making it two-dimensional and sometimes and like the way we perceive three-dimensional space is like different than how we perceive a drawing of it and so if you're trying to get the way it feels to actually be in the space sometimes you need to not do an accurate representation of the space Right. As, as a photograph but like make it feel like you're actually in it exactly that's cool so this one that's the power we all have as artists it's so cool i just love art it's like fascinating so um the spirited away <laughs> what about a journeyman <laughs> uh i'm more of an adept <laughs> um okay let's figure out where this perspective is um Okay, I need to shift it in a bit, and okay, I feel like it's somewhere. Julia, you picked such like beautiful example images. Thanks. I tried to pick ones that would get people to be interested in learning perspective and to see the different kinds of ways that it can be used, and it's not just like for drawing a. Uh, uh, architecture of a house like you can get these beautiful illustrations from knowing these like kind of strict rules um yeah you're just... you're sparking the imagination over here yay because <laughs> also the other thing about perspective is that it's such a good storytelling tool right like you know when we were talking about the one point perspective it's drawing the attention to the person in the center or you know it's, it's driving attention here, but there's something going on over here. And when when it when you see it and it hits, you're like, oh, whoa. When when the Look perspective that. hits. When the perspective hits. Um. So yes. Uh. Okay. So then let's find. I just want to do this one because it's fun. We whoop. Whoop. I moved the whole line instead of the point. So that one's over there somewhere. And this one, we can find it through, you know, this window. And, oh, I lost my anchor point. Okay, so this is And just it's right. gone. And it's gone. Okay, so the horizon line's somewhere over there. Um, yeah. 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 This is just, like, a good exercise to do, even if, like, if you're not you know, in the mood to draw your own drawing, but you just want to, like, practice thinking about perspective. Just take a a scene from a movie that you like and and try and puzzle it out. Yeah, because you see that... And then, you know, you've still still learned. Yeah, and it's especially for, again, Ghibli movies where they will kind of cheat things to be more... uh, has that human element to it with everything. Mm-hmm. It has that, that history, that touch. Like you saw me trying to figure out this right perspective, but it's not perfectly in one spot because uh, age is going to shift things. Yeah. So like this is tilting a little further down than this angle, which would be, which would have to be a little bit more solid because of how the building is built. Like, you know, it like has to hold up. You know, right again we're dealing like perspective works because you're assuming that all of these lines are parallel that's that's in right. like 
yeah. they they would all be going to the same vanishing point if they're parallel. But if they're slightly not parallel, then they're not. You yeah. Know, there's going to be slight variation, just like maybe maybe these buildings weren't designed perfectly. Yeah. In line or maybe with one each of them's other. at a slight angle. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see that in a lot of Professor Layton things, which I do have an example of because I do like Professor Layton drawing. Of course, you've got a Professor Layton example. They're really good because they're they're really loose, but they still yeah. stay within the rules of perspective. Yeah. Uh, here is still the inside. Read. Yeah, oh, very rude. That's... <laughs> I love these little Just, guys. The uh, I saw someone someone posted like uh, the the shot of all of them in the bath together with the uh, the caption "Me and the lads after we all get the vaccine." <laughs> all going to the bathhouse. Just all of us in the very same close. bath together. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh... um, perspective. You can see. These are going to some point over here because of these floorboards. You can see that these are going over here. You know, it's very slight, but you know, you yeah. see the, the two point there. I love him. these dudes so much. <laughs> <laughs> Little wall-eyed. Little wall-eyed guys. Chickens. Yeah. So how you would do two point perspective. Let's, let's do that real fast. Let's make our own. Let's make, let's our, make our, own. our own one. Let's make our own. So, if we have a horizon line, yeah, let's put the horizon line there. We great place for horizon line. Thank you. I chose blue again. <laughs> Julia, I can't choose blue. More like blue, Julia. Yeah, because I blew it. <laughs> let's put let's put them kind of close together for the sake of this example. Um. So let's do, I can, I keep doing blue. There we go. Okay. So let's put a line dead center just to show yeah. the examples, right? So this side's going to go back to the left point. Right side's going to go back to the right point because we're going to draw another cube. So oh, it's go. cubes. It's all cubes. It's cubes o'clock. If you want to build something in 3D space, guess what? It's cubes. And then um, here's a question off. from chat that's uh, somewhat related. Um, yes. This may be a hybrid perspective composition question, but how do you choose to include or omit things like floorboard lines or uh, you know different details for different reasons? That's a good question. Like I know you you like to include a lot yeah. of details in your work. But. I used to include every single floorboard and that's something that as I've been learning, I've been doing less of. I like to do um, floorboards. Um, you know, I have an example. I'll just show you. Um, Violet Evergarden. There it is. Love Violet Evergarden. If you want to learn damn good backgrounds, watch Violet. So yeah, learn Blender. I wonder. So um, the floorboards, if something's closer to you, you're going to see it more. You're going to see more details of it. As it gets further away, you're probably going to see less details of it. I think mm -hmm. that you could bring that lesson in with floorboards. Um, or you can pick and choose. Like if you want this section to be brighter, maybe the glow of the light is making you see less of the floorboard. So you just omit it from there. If things are looking too busy, Take some of them out. Fade some of them out. Um, I did a Patreon request for this month where I have individual floorboards in there. Mm -hmm. Someone requested a room. Um, and I they faded They chose the some right artist out. for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was rooms in space. That's not the full thing, but that's how I chose to interpret someone, it. Someone uh, requested me to draw them a building. Uh, for one of their Patreon requests, and I was like, "Okay, I'll I'll give it a shot." You did a very good job with that. It was fun. I, it was a fun challenge. I appreciated it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's like if you want to give the hint, um, you know, you can fade in and out of floorboards to kind of give the indication that there are boards there, but you don't want it to overwhelm the space. You can kind of fade in and fade out. Um. Just know where you put the lines. It's going to make, obviously, that space a little bit busier. And, um, 
Yeah, and it's it's gonna give it a little bit more depth. So can we it, can we zoom in on the on this picture a little bit? Uh, just because uh, I want to because it like. Yeah, those, so you, like, see you can each see one. they're drawn they're drawn in but they're like very subtle yes they're a little bit darker and they also have a little bit of a highlight on each board because of yeah, the light is the light here. source yeah so it's hitting that like you know that that 3d space uh so you have a little highlight here uh, right next to the shadow which is just good lighting rules anyway it's light next to shadow or light next to dark See, but it, it fades out. Like, it doesn't get darker under this table. Because right. then that's going to make it a little bit too busy. It's going to make it a little distracting. You don't really see it here, either. Yeah. You see it a little bit. But, like... It looks it looks like they drew them all in and then, like, used effects over top to, like, fade them out. Yeah. Um, I'll see. I don't think I'll be able to find a, another picture of the inside but they really oh here we go mm, that's a bad example <coughs> excuse me um yeah I mean they they love to draw floorboards in this show <laughs> <laughs> something I learned while I was doing that piece really you just you nailed that style so, like the 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 color palette and lighting effects and everything thank you in yours it's just like this could just as easily be the thing you drew i love that show so much it's so good we couldn't it's... have any during the war you couldn't have any during the war um in that show it could mean like biscuits or feelings it's very one or the other okay and anything in between okay so anyway, um, yeah, that's my thing for the floorboards. If it gives it depth, I say go for it. But if it's going to make it too busy, I say start fading them out. Um, okay. It's up to you. The answer is it's up to you. It's, up it's to you. you know look look at the drawing and decide if it if it's working and if it if it isn't if it's yeah. too busy, get rid of some. If you think it needs more, add some more. So because we have two points, you're either going to have vertical or horizontal being your straight line. So you're usually going to start off with like a point. So like if we start off with a point like this, draw back here, draw back here. And then, so here's the other point. If you want this box to end here, then you take this point and bring it back. Take this point, you bring it back. So that's how you would get that box shape. Another floaty box. Yeah, another floaty box. So one I'm them, just one of them floaty boxes. I'm just figuring out this back wall here. Sometimes in order to figure out like the depth of a shape, you'll have to draw the inside a little bit, and that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. You can do it. You can do. There we go. And that's how you get. And that's the way you do it. That is the way you do it. I can't wait. Of a box to show how you do circles in 3d space it's like my favorite thing because it looks so i'm excited for that i never got that far it just looks like an arcane art are you um, gonna do a, a summoning circle you know i'm gonna do a summoning circle. oh i'm so excited julia <laughs> i just want to cover three yeah, 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 yeah. point real fast because i'm not going to spend too long on it because i feel like that's where people uh lose interest okay and then i see another question what's the other question um what if you're doing a drawing that doesn't have a horizon line say the main subject is way up in the sky or open water so if you that's a good question i mean it's like the horizon line you wouldn't draw a horizon line it's just you would have a figurative one like um mm -hmm. You know, you would still have two vanishing points, but they would they would still rest on the same horizon line. You just wouldn't draw yeah. that physical line. It wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't be an actual horizon line. It would be the line of perspective for the subject. Right, like you would use this, you know, metaphorical ruler to kind of figure out where those two points are, make sure they're on the same line, and then everything would go back there. I mean, if someone's in, if someone's flying through space, um, 
and they're like here oh great <laughs> the rocketeer uh rocketeer or, ro or ro ro rocket man this is rocket man oh rocket man okay <laughs> This is my Elton John. This is Elton John in Rocket Man. Cause I'm a Rocket Man. Okay, he looked, he I made him draw. I made him look like a clown. But anyway, you would have if they're high up in space. Uh, the horizon line would probably be down here. So if you were to have some like boxes with him, they would go back down to the space. You know. Um, but yeah, it's it's really it depends on your piece. You would just have a. Yeah, it depends like where where you are in yeah. relation to what you're looking at. Like yeah. if you're up in space too, right? Looking at this this clown, right? Like if you're uh, looking up, so that means that the horizon line is below your field of vision, right? Then that would be that example I just drew. If you're in space yeah. and you are next to the International Space Station, your horizon line is still going to be probably in the middle of somewhere, middle-ish yeah. for that space station. You know, it's wherever those points are going back to. Um, Three-point perspective. Oh, boy. Three-point perspective oh, is boy. usually when you want to show that a room is very big or that a building is really big or you're looking down at a space that's going down, but also there's points going. I'll show you. That violet, everyone, like, every like if you're if you're above like a city skyline yes. looking down at it. And yeah. So there are buildings going in all directions, but also going away from you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So an example I have for that is again, from my favorite movie called The Fall. <laughs> it's to show how big this building is, is that it's going up in a way. So yeah. like if you're looking up at a skyscraper, it's gonna get smaller at the top yeah. in your vision. Um, looking at the Eiffel Tower, the bottom's going to be, oh my god, ginormous, and then the the top is going to be, well, if you're under it, you won't be able to see it, but uh, it'll get smaller as it goes up. So yeah, the Eiffel Tower is actually perfectly uh, rectangular. It's just because of perspective that the it, bottom looks. It's actually spherical. So much bigger. But... <laughs> oh, <laughs> just uh, trickery. That's why it's it's so... all trickery. That's why it's so impressive. So you see that this building is almost, it almost looks like it's like leaning back. And that's what three point perspective is. Um, so I really like the shot also to describe three point because you have one, two, and then three. Like they're all going to their own points. They're all going in different yeah. directions. So figure out this three point. I did this also with um, the Draw Detectives Mansion, the outside view. I did three point. It's very slight because I didn't want it to be like, because we're still kind of far away in that shot. Like the mm -hmm. closer you are for something, the more affected it is by 3D space, basically. Yeah. Or that's yeah, depending on the size, but um, yeah. So this, this is going back and up into space. Boop. There we go. <laughs> See, it's, it's around there. Up, oh, yep. The noise up or oop always reminds me of uh, Owen Parsons from work because he said there is no funnier death noise than the noise of oop. Yep. <laughs> I remember. It was like, yeah, that, that's like one of my um, earliest memories of, of working at college where is Caldwell and Owen just discussing how funny... Hearing, hearing someone go whoop whoop as their Just final with no contact yeah as their as the last thing they've said in life is whoop <laughs> <laughs> just like mild surprise you can find something so horrible many, happens you can find so many Owen comics where his punchline is just whoop whoop <laughs> makes me laugh uh so yeah so this is three point. It just shows the depth of a thing. Um, let's do a different example. This one's also Ooh. from the fall. <laughs> Go figure. Man, they love that three. What is the fall about? When did I don't know anything about the fall. 
The Fall is about. I'm not. I'm going to try to not do any spoilers. So no spoilers. Two thousand six. Yes. So The Fall is about Lee Pace, who is a silent film stuntman, and he gets injured on the filming of of a movie, um, and he wants something in the hospital and he meets up with this little girl who's very sweet and he starts telling her a story but he starts using the story to get what he needs as like leverage like well if you want me to continue the story then go get me something Um... but you see the story he's telling from her imagination so everyone that's in the story are people that's been around the hospital gotcha uh, it's like it's uh, what? What are them like a uh, like a water for elephants or a secondhand lions or a yeah. a movie a movie where someone's telling a story and it's imagination and yeah stuff. So gotcha. you go in and out of the story Lee Pace is telling back to cool. the hospital where they are and kind of seeing his life and his life events and his mental state affect the story's telling. Um, and Lee Pace ain't, ain't doing so hot in that movie. So it's, um, it gets a little bloody if that's not your thing. Not too, not too bad, but anyway, so, uh, three point perspective. I picked this one for three point because it's also very subtle. Um, oh, yeah, you that, can see the top one's way up there. Yeah. This 3d perspective is way up, but you can see that it's all going up to a point. Yeah. They're converging. And then, yeah, exactly. They're converging somewhere. And then you have uh, this one that is going off here. So you get these. You get those points. And then you have this, which is, again, going off like way out to the left of there, but still. It's it's your third point. So it's just to show this, like, again, how massive this structure is. Because, again, um, this is a place that Jacob's been to, and he said that this place is actually, like, pretty small. Oh, so they're using, <laughs> using framing right. to make yeah. it look bigger. Yeah. That's cool. He said it's really impressive, but it's, like, just surrounded by, like, commerce and people living their life, and it's, like, in the middle of a city. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you see this lady running, but um, I recommend, uh, by the way, the fall to anyone who is looking for tips on composition and perspective and how to use perspective for composition, because it's where basically I learned all of my composition lessons from just watching that. There's a lot of really beautiful shots of like things pointing to a character. Um, like this one is also from the fall. Um, and this one's three point because it's looking down at all these people. And I could, <laughs> if this were a lot smaller, I could show you how they do this sphere and how you would do it in drawing form. But <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do that right now because I want I okay. want to get through three three uh, point perspectives point. that yeah. We can do an example, and then I could show you guys how to do spheres in 3D space. Oh, not spheres, but um, like arches and things like that. Rounded stuff. Rounded things. You can go back to that room you made. That has a little rounded area. Exactly. The conservatory. So, we couldn't have any rounded bits during the war. We couldn't have any rounded bits during the war. That's true. Everything here is very squared off. Uh, this is 3D. This is um, three-point perspective. Um, because this is all going down to a point. Um, this is going back to a point. That way, yeah. And then this one's going back and to then a point. those ones, yeah. See, they're That's all three. going back into a thing. I just put a arrow on that lady's face, but it's okay. <laughs> it's going right into her face. Yes, it is. Excuse me, ma'am. Your face is in the way of my uh, my my vanishing point. Uh, ma'am. Ma'am. Please. Ma'am, ma'am, your ma'am, your face, ma'am, ma'am. Um, ma'am. So let's cover how to do circles 
in these perspectives. Yes. Are we ready? Yes. For some circles. Let's Get go ready back for some circles. Let's let's go back to a one point perspective. So okay. I'm gonna draw a horizon line. Let's put that there. Let's say that the vanishing point is here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put this in yellow. So th this is a one. This is a one point. This is a one point. Back to one. We're back to one. So what you're going to want to do is draw a flat square on the ground. So how we do that is we do, let me do this on a new layer. So we have, let's make it actually a little bit closer and a little bit smaller. Uh, we have our vertical here. Let's get our path to make square. Um, so then what you do is you do the box again. You do the, you do the X. Do the X. Everything Always do the X. Everything in perspective can be made with an X. The X is very useful. X is life. <laughs> so, oh, also what you want to do actually is you want to draw the cross of it. So like the little, the little T shape. More lines. More lines, because then what you do. Right. This is how I. This is how I remember making windows. Yes. Like window shapes. Like you make the X first, and then where the middle of the X is, that's where you draw the little plus for the window. Yeah. And then you erase the X. Yeah. And then it's a little window. Then you get a little window. So you can make circles out of this. So what you do is that you connect this. And you go in and you go to that point. You follow, you try to stay true to that. So you just show a little bit of that corner over here. Mm -hmm. It's like a little wagon wheel. Yes. Yeah, so a little you're making, bicycle. You're making a little wagon wheel. A little pizza. You're making, you made the box for the pizza and then you put the pizza in there. Now you put the pizza in there. You draw the slices. You draw the slices first, and then you make the pizza around the slices. That's what they don't tell you. That's what they don't tell Is you. Is that the slice? That's the yeah. true New York way of doing it. How come pizzas are round, but the box is square, but the slices are triangles? It's because of perspective, it turns out. Because of perspective. And also, because if it were a circle, we would frisbee the pizza before we even got it home. Let's That's be real. True. So we'll you can also White, throw it up on the roof. You can check this by lining this up, but like it's hard because you need this little flat point to be lined up with that center line. So what you would do is actually you would line it up so that this anchor point hits that center line. Like that, and then you would line up the center of that, and then you would pull kind of this out, and then you would have to finagle it a little bit. But that's basically, whoops, didn't mean to Where'd do that. Where'd the circle go? So you would go up from here. If mm -hmm. you wanted to make a cylinder in 3D space. Yes, the elephant's you, leg. In order to draw a completely in perspective elephant's leg, this is what you need to do. <laughs> so you go up, go up, go oh up. Oh my god. I'm gonna put this at 50% so that's not too confusing. It's already it's confusing. So, such a powerful image. <laughs> Power. So, looks like a magic spell. Hell yeah. So then, you just go up from all those points. You draw your, your horizontal line. You do this and then where that connects you go across so you do the same here then you can connect these and then you connect here we go then you erase a little bit of this and so that's how you would do so then you just repeat the process for the top here and you draw another little 
So you draw Circle another... using those guides. Yep. Yeah. So you're just like, basically the, the purpose of the X on like here is so that you know how much you're like cutting off of that circle, how much you're like trimming there. Yeah, sort of like flattening it out. Yeah, so that you can have that sense I'm just, of... I just really want some pizza now. I know, so do I. Also, Julia, pizza. I thought I thought of you. Um, I we we were um, I've started ordering these like um, it's like a step between Blue Apron and just like ordering from a restaurant where it's like these pre-made meals that you just like heat up. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do any cooking, but it still smells like you did cooking in your house. Right. And one of them was a lasagna. But it was a uh, butternut squash instead of tomato sauce mm. lasagna. So I'm excited to try that. Nice. It has been ordered. But I just <laughs> just think of you saying it looks like sheets of lasagna. It looks like sheets of lasagna. <laughs> so this is kind of hastily drawn, so that's why it's a little, little wonky. But um the staircase that I did in Draw Detectives, right, used all of those principles. So if I were to do that staircase again, let's do the red. Uh, that staircase gave me anxiety when I saw it, <laughs> just to think about the fact that you had to draw it. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> It felt so satisfying to be done with it. Yeah. Um, so I'll show you how I did this. Let's do... So I'm drawing my box again. Mm -hmm. Start with your box. Start with your box. Make your little X, connecting the corners. Okay, there we go. So then... Bring this up. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, that's going to be off the. That's okay. <laughs> and there that's it goes. That's okay. And there it goes. Don't panic. Don't it's panic. Important. You're going to see a lot of lines on your drawing. Don't. Be afraid of those lines. They can't oh. hurt you. They can't. It's fine. You can just lower the opacity on them if they're if they're too in your face. Yeah. So then This is very just satisfying. Right. And it's this, also like kind of I brain off like for me at this point, so watching you draw like geometric stuff, I feel like that could be like a fun chill stream we all just get to relax and chat while you do some cool designy stuff watch Ju julia do geometry yeah it's so, very satisfying i had a spiral staircase so this is how i figured out the outside circle of it so basically what i did was that i drew my circle eh. yeah yeah yeah, I mean, it's a little it's, jagged because I'm r rushing, but there we you go. get the idea. You get the idea. You would you would spend more time on it if yeah, it wouldn't if look you, so... if it were a drawing and not like an example for a lesson. Yeah, it would look less uh, flat tirey. It would look more like a pizza. It would look more like a pizza. There we go. You also want like your furthest point of the circle to be that, you know, that spoke of the wheel, basically. Yeah. Um, okay. So there's... We'll fix it in post, we'll but we're drawing post. a post. Oh, no. Go, go, go. Go, so go, go. if I want to do the inside, because I did a spiral staircase that had two stairs going up, Mm -hmm. What you do, and I'm going to do this in a different color, and I'm going to lower the opacity on this. 
is that I took that outside bounding square that I already drew and I just made a smaller version of it. Come on. There we go. Thank you everyone for appreciating my my joke. It was good. <laughs> I liked it. This is it's like these draw classes are fun because I get to be I get to be what I always wanted to be in school, which was like the person making making dumb comments at the teacher while they're talking, but I'm I don't get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be here. Well, I feel like <laughs> your job is to make uh, in these draw classes is to make it less spooky for people and more relatable and just more fun cuz my head is completely in the perspective game right now. You're just you're just teaching. You're just laying truths down on what us and truths? I'm here and I'm I'm sprinkling in some lies just for fun. <laughs> sprinkling in some lies. 90% of this class is probably right. 10% <laughs> maybe. The lies. thing I said about the Eiffel Tower was a goof. What? <laughs> it's not a perfect. It's not a. What? It's not a perfect square? Okay. What's so that? this is how I did the spiral. Oh my god. <laughs> so then. This is, I, had... I, I want everyone to know that I am not drawing along. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> watching. But if you are drawing along, I am excited to see what uh, what y'all come up with. So I, I stopped drawing along after, uh, <laughs> after Cube Room. After that Cube was, Room. I, you know, honestly, I learned about the shortcuts for the pen tool, and that's going to be helpful. Yeah. So... So, yeah. I made a staircase out of this. <laughs> Julia, you made a tall donut. <laughs> I made a really long donut. I made a donut going into a black hole. So, what I did... Whoop. Thick line. Thick line. So, I wanted these to be on a diagonal, so I just didn't put them in perspective at all. Going to be honest, mm -hmm. I didn't draw detectives. I eyeballed this bottom part. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Hey, don't hey, everyone, all... Everyone be cool. All 24 of you watching, don't tell anyone. Don't tell and anyone. If you're, and if you're watching the VOD later, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> this is a secret. Be cool. Be, can you all just be cool? Can you be cool? Everyone, everyone just be cool, okay? Can you please just be cool for like one minute? No, just be cool, okay? Come on. Come on. Um, okay. So then I did I did a little whoop. To a little helix. A so little I, helix. I think stairs. at some point well, I mean I made this very tall. So really mm -hmm. what I did, I think, was that I like I did it's not gonna work because I made it too tall. But it's okay. I I basically followed this is a very no one can use this staircase, but we're just uh, we're just um I'm showing I'm showing principle here. This is the staircase from my nightmare, <laughs> where, I, where it's a mall full of escalators and they're they're too hard to stand on and I end up falling. Yeah. That it, these are uh, a problem. But then I had all the stairs going back to a vanishing point. It's just like everything can be built out of out of a uh, out of a cube or like a square. Um, Chat. If, everyone in chat has assured us that they are cool, so that's reassuring. Thank you. We only allow people on this channel if they are cool. They're all cool. They're all gonna be cool. Yeah. Everyone's cool. Just be cool. Just be cool. Just a just a couple of Fonzies. A couple of Fonzies. The Muppet. Fonzie Fon Bear. Fonzie Bear. Waka Waka. A. A. <laughs> I'm hitting the jukebox, Kermit. <laughs> Jacob literally took his headphones off at that point, and I thought he was going to yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> my bad.
dad joke. I didn't even hear the joke. I I All said I heard that. Is I hit in the jukebox, Kermit, and I liked that. <laughs> it was. I said Fonzie Bear, Fo, Fonzie Bear from Muppets. Oh, Fonzie Bear. Yeah. Is that joke approved? Yeah, that's good. That's a good one. Okay, that's thanks. a good one. We approve. Thank you, thank you, Jacob. Jacob would be wrong to not approve. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um. Oh, you got your stockings up. I did. That's so nice. I made some stockings last year. If anyone's wondering why the two little stockings don't have joy and Olive's letters on it, it's because I made them in anticipation they for getting two cats. So that they would be ready for when the girls got here. Because for some reason I thought they would care. Even There's though they no are way cats. to see letters at this size. That's true. I let, guess I can, I can see one J. Let me stop sharing my screen and then... Wow. Olive is really the odd odd one out in the, uh, in the apartment. The only yeah. non-J... JJ. JJJ. J, J, oh. <laughs> anyway, I made them or... some stockings and they didn't. I I wanted them to be ready for when they it's came. So home. festive. I love it. It's festive. Okay. I am not in the festive room in my apartment right now, but I do have a festive room. This is I business recorded only. A... I recorded a video in that festive room that I'm hopefully going to have done and posted either tomorrow or Sunday. Did you? Yeah. Is it a CTA? It's um it's a it's a channel. It's a just oh. to let people know about the the holiday Got posting it. schedule. Schedule. So I'm just showing how you would do like a series of arches in perspective. Oh. Since you had mentioned oh. the window. Oh. Yeah. The aqueduct. The aqueduct. The what? The aqueduct. Well, but besides the aqueduct, what have the Romans ever done for us? <laughs> um, Ryan, good movie. It is a good movie. Okay. So I'm not bothering to put that in perspective, but this is just get, a get again, idea. a proof of concept. Yeah. See, that's how you would do in perspective. And they would keep Archers. getting bigger as they come towards us. They would keep getting bigger as they come towards us. Um, so that is very quickly how to do those things in perspective. Um, I hope that I've given people enough of like a basis in order to go off and try it themselves. I also have some kind of uh, people who follow the rules but do it loosely before we get to questions, uh, and that's the Professor Layton games. Oh, yeah. So, Professor yeah, Layton, how, they how break follow. the rules yeah. for style. Yes. So, you can see this house is like wiggity wonkity. There's no way this house can stand, but it since it follows the rules of perspective here's here's also the thing with it is that mm -hmm. yes they're being a little loosey-goosey with perspective mm -hmm. but they're doing it with such a, a heavy hand that it is like looks purposeful they're not yeah. going off by like a little bit so then it's like mm. so one of my favorite paintings of all times it's, an, it's intentional. It doesn't look like a mistake because it's exactly. like done with such. It's clearly a stylistic choice. So, so if you're gonna make a mistake, do it confidently so it looks like a choice. That's exactly it. That's art. <laughs> that's art, baby. In a weird uh, example, one of my favorite paintings of all times, my favorite artist of all time, first of all, is Manet. He did a painting called The Absinthe Drinker. Uh, that is very big. So The Absinthe Drinker is this painting where um, nothing makes sense the more you look at it. The more you look at it, the less makes sense about it. And it's supposed <laughs> to be 
that is done on purpose because it's supposed to be like the effects of drinking absinthe where at first glance everything seems pretty normal and then you start like really trying to focus and the more things are kind of out of whack and he does this a lot he does this a lot if people are drinking in a piece um there's also that woman uh working at the bar painting that he did the mirror there it is um and it also doesn't make sense and it's because you're supposed to be a little drunk seeming interesting um so there we go <laughs> so the absinthe drinker one he's like what are you what <laughs> so, what do you my favorite okay, you ready you done you I'm can tell you off exactly why i like him the second you look at it because it's a bunch of really bored people yeah passive um, portraits yeah so a lot of things won't line up the the back of the of oh, the yeah, ledge already. he's sitting on is over here but over here it's here uh the shadow for this guy is going this direction is going that direction right yeah um but then this one is super short that shadow and this shadow is going both that way and that way he's just having fun he's he's goofing yeah and this knee this is a troll this is a shit post it is a shit post <laughs> i love it it's one of my favorite paintings and it's just because it's like uh i want to like, draw yeah. this this kind of drunk guy where you feel a little drunk looking at it and it's one of the first yeah. examples of trying to push it like the more you look at this piece the weirder it gets and it's one of the first yeah. examples of it oh, yeah. um, also his hat just doesn't have a shadow at all his hat doesn't have a shadow at all um this knee is like i mean his hips would have to be like here basically which is below the ledge because it's going like the this yeah. thigh shape is going like that um this foot is hella tiny um this that's so funny that's so good 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 on him i for doing love that. manet paintings this one also doesn't make sense um there's a lot of things that uh don't line up like the back of this woman is this lady oh it's supposed to be a it's a mirror reflection yeah oh so this but, is supposed to be the artist or you know the the you know, gotcha. who you're looking through the eyes of, but it's all the way over here, which is like, not yeah. the, that's not how that works. Um, the perspective on a few of the things don't really make sense. Um, it's And it's such a good, it's like, cause he, he, he's also demonstrating just like how good of a realistic painter he is. Yes. Just with like all the details and stuff. And he's like, yeah, I could make this make sense if I wanted to. He's like, I know the I rules. Didn't. I just don't want to. Yeah. Um, like. That's cool. That's going in a weird direction. Like none of these. Nothing. Nothing is how it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's all. It's all. It's all meant to disorient and confuse. That's yeah. so good. I mean, he does paintings where he proves that he knows how to do these things. He's just like, mm, I don't think so. Didn't feel like it. Didn't I don't feel, feel like, like it, it today. Time. Um, one of my actual favorite paintings, and I can't explain why. Um, he also did Olymp. Olympia, which is a famous one, but I don't know if I can show this on this one because it's is Olympia B, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite wonders to to get in Seven Wonders. What? There's a there's a board game. Oh, okay. I was making a board. I was making a board game uh, reference sorry. to uh, Seven Wonders, the board game. Olympia is one of the oh the one with someone with the money. It's the money wonder. Okay. The B side gives you get a bunch of money every time you build it. It's pretty good. It's um, fun, to, fun to play as. <laughs> this uh, I just really like this painter. I mean, but it also just shows how good of a painter he is. I just like it. It's yeah. just a nice painting. I think it's in the mat. Sweet, sweet little, it's little flute a little, boy. Little boy playing the flute. Little flautist. Um. So yeah, so if you want to really push it, you know, these are examples of how or why, like this place still feels like a place you can go to even though nothing really makes sense, 
mm-hmm. but it's because it does actually make sense because it's using like the rules of physics and you know depth and things like you know this is this is all going back to the A right point. Yeah. point you know like it's still saying like hey i'm going further away from the horizon line so this angle is going to get sharper yeah you know and it's so it, it gives it that correct depth but you know and then you get some ledges that are cheating it like actually this correct. one is a little too sharp and if you look at the the tops of those chimneys they're all like yeah going doing they're they're <laughs> Yeah, they're all going their really own way. Sharp, but this like, one but goes they're, back. They're obviously not parallel and not drawn to look like they should be parallel. So it doesn't look wrong. It looks stylized. Right. Yeah. And it's also like, you know, as you said, it's stylized and they're all going back to a point. But it's because these shapes that are facing us and aren't going into perspective are still wonky as hell. Like right. this, this, you know, like this whole roof here is tilting. It's, it's, it's doing a little bit of a bend, yeah. Yeah, it's all you can like... Tell it, yeah, it really feels like the it's straining under the weight of itself. It, like, it makes it feel old. Right. So if you're going to yes. eyeball perspective, basically, I would say still Withered. measure it. You just don't have to be so strict about it. You can yeah. you know, still get this kind of feeling with it, you, but... You can play with it. You can play, play in the... Sp- Ooh. This one's a really nice one. This is also from Professor Ooh, Layton. Ooh, yeah, dude. Yeah. That's so fun. And so, like, these houses are some wild shapes and, you know, kind of wonky. But it's still, this is going back to a point. Like, they knew where the vanishing point was. They knew where the horizon was. It looks like it's going to fall over, but it's not. But it's not. Um, So it it knows where its vanishing point is. And it says, it's over here. I'm going to, you know, keep referring back to it. You know, they had a, a clear idea, but it's still stylized and it looks awesome and yeah. it doesn't look as rigid or strict as, you know, some other examples we've looked at. So it gives it that history, it gives it that charm, it gives it, you know, it's its own kind of whimsical world feel. Very whimsical. Yeah. I love Professor Layton backgrounds. They are bonkers. Um like uh this one i'll pull this one up it's just so playful it is playful like like here's this big foreboding mansion but it's still and oh they got that rounded staircase also coming at us (laughs) and you got that depth in the arch here which they yeah you know probably did kind of a similar a similar thing with the with the square that i was talking about um and the little the little trees in the foreground for scale really make it seem like yeah. big and like know? look at whoops look at the um the pillars here they're going back into space so while they're not like a long straight line it's still giving this very nice illusion of depth because yep they're getting closer together as they get further away together as they go back yeah you yep. And they're still following this kind of line. And see, it's like this going back, this going back, this going back. Yeah. So, yeah, I really, I'm trying to learn more from Professor Layton ones because I tend to make my uh, backgrounds a little rigid, uh, which is good sometimes if you want something like very, like solidly crafted, you know, right. pristine, perfect, built, but... I like the kind of lived-in charm, but I always have a, a hard time deviating from rules. Right, because it it is it's like it's a confidence thing. It really yeah. is just like uh, you have you to know. say like I know these rules. I can, I have to, I know my instinct. I know my gut. I know my gut's gonna be right about it. So I just have to go with it. Yeah, that's something. That's something I struggle with too. Yeah. Is just like trying to like over detailing something or adding stuff because I want to I feel like I need to prove that I know how to draw mm-hmm. whereas like you know some of the some of my favorite stuff is like very simple because it's like it's so confident it's just like yeah, yeah. I know I know what shape this is well it's like the biggest reaction I've gotten from from you in these backgrounds is a professor Layton one and I think it's because it is like charming and it has its own style and it's not like so rigid and it's you know. It just has a feel to it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
And it's like what we were saying earlier, where it's like, you know, you get the feel, but not the rules. You got the rules, but not the feel. Then you can hit both. You know, you can get both. Yeah, you can get both. I wanted to show very quickly. Um, I forgot that I had this up, but I did that squaring off thing for, um, for that little rounded zone. Yeah, for this rounded zone. So I had basically found my vantage point. Uh, I measured out the circle, and then I did I did that whole like tube, basically. You know, something. And here's an example, like and you drew every brick on the ground. I did draw every brick. Yeah, that's where I was feeling less confident about what <laughs> I was doing. <laughs> and so. But then on the wall over there, you only you only drew a few of the bricks right above the yes, sort of doorway. Because I felt on the like I was getting too there. busy. Yeah. So there so. you go. That's back to that question. Yeah, and exactly. I and it, I think it works because again the bricks on the ground they're they're in this sort of light color the the cement between mm -hmm. the bricks is this nice light color so it's not overly yeah like I, I don't think it would work if if you had the bricks separated out in that like black yeah so like yeah. where where you use that that darker stroke to indicate bricks it's not yeah you I didn't think... draw each one you you hinted at it right and I think it it makes it. It, like works as a composition i also drew the square obviously for this oh guy. yeah you know you can see the lily pads in there um yeah i also was dealing with like a, a bit of a time crunch for some of these like there was no no one was telling me to hurry up but i was telling myself to hurry up because i didn't want to spend too long on yeah. it so for some Draw of these Detectives episodes are like the only episodes that are ever finished so much far in advance of when <laughs> they need to post. I try. Try and in the new year we're gonna we're gonna have a backlog. Hell yeah. We're gonna be ready. Um but you can see how I did the circle here as well. Um everything's cubes, y'all. Do we have any it's questions? All cubes. We got twelve. We got twelve more uh, minutos. Yeah. If anyone's got anything, or if I any should cover anything, or I'll perspective, put... composition, perspective, style, composition, any of those. Anyone? Any any opening up the floor. You got us. Or you can um, just look at this lovely self-portrait Julia drew, <laughs> just gritting her teeth. Little bags under her eyes. <laughs> I think this is how people feel about perspective. They're like, oh, yay. Um, is fisheye perspective different rules than this? So fisheye perspective is a whole other beast. So basically what you would do. Hot guy fisheye. Is, oh God, fish eye, is you would have your first. Oh, Mad Hat Trick, happy holidays to you and, and everyone watching. Happy, happy, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Hope everyone has a good one. We're going to have one more yeah. stream before we go yeah, on. We got one more but... one more live stream on Monday. One more, one more episode, a nice holiday-themed episode to end out the year. And then we got our, our Dragas. Which will be old news to anyone watching the VOD. Yep. But that's, you know, that's a risky run when you watch the VOD. You get to be like, I'm in the future. <laughs> Viewing the past. Fish Eye. Fish Eye is a, the, a wild beast. All the retrospectives on this year are going to be like, well, hindsight really is 2020 this year. Cool. <laughs> Bip, bip. We got a cool Secretary of Interior, so I'm excited about that. Nice. Um, so Fish Eye. Uh, gets this bubble thing. Basically, if you draw... Let's bust it out that bubble. Yeah. Um, as you get to the edges of it, it tends to uh, get a little closer. Uh, if you get towards the center, it gets, tends to get a little more distant. So, um, let's say your horizon line is here. If you were to draw your, basically it would change like your vertical 
So you would follow this kind of like circle shape. So it would get more straight as you go towards the center or more curved as you get to the outside. So, gotcha. so this we, is this is a one point perspective fish this eye. It's a one point perspective fish eye. So if we have like a hallway again, just because they're good examples. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's have a door here. And let's have. Oh, whoops, this would be a little curved. Oops. A little curved. A little, a little curved in the middle. A little, a little curve. It's a, little, a little bubble. So then we'd have painting. And then this I'm eyeballing, obviously. I feel like I'm looking through looking through the peephole in my hotel room. Yeah. I heard a knock at the door. And again, the, uh, the the lines are still leading to the back, so and you could hide something. Yep. Hide something to the side. Uh, do you think the people in a in a hotel always scares me? Or I'm watching a late '90s music video. I was just thinking Jamiroquai, and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't even know if he had a music video with Fish Eye, but I'm thinking like, like Kid Rock. Oh. This is yeah. like definitely a every yeah. skating video yeah from the early 2000s like someone someone figured out that that was they were just like this is the coolest thing this is the yeah. coolest way to present information oh something also that i should mention with one point or any perspective the closer you get to the uh to the vanishing point um, obviously that part's going to be smaller because it's further away from you. And so remember to apply that to, um, like frames. I'm going to use it as a very specific example. So like, if this is a painting, um, it's Porfo. It's Porfo. Um, like the edge of the painting is going to be closer to that than it is here. Right. You know, because this side's right, going to be right, smaller because right. it's going further away from you. This one's going to be bigger because it's coming, it's closer to you. So that, Again, I think, you is can something just, people you forget. You can imagine the, the X's. Just use the, use the X to remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like, you know, this, the molding on a door frame is yep. going to be it's gonna be bigger on the one that's closer to you. Yep. See? So that's. It looks like the the doors like trying to listen to a secret. <laughs> Doing that that like, lean hey. that the Grinch does when he's listening to hey, see what, all the chaos uh, in the what, you, what are you talking about over there? What you doing? Um, but yeah, that's that's get fish Jenna on Drawfee. Yeah, love Jenna. She's great. Jake, uh, Jacob and Nathan have done a D and D with her as as yeah. twins. Demon Lord. Demon Lord. Shadow of the Demon Lord. The 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 only Shadow of the Demon Lord campaign I've ever completed was with. I know. I'm Brian so bummed because I was in the other one. We're close. We we'll start that one up again. I bet. Yeah. Um. Any more questions? Very quickly. Uh. We have a couple more minutes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. Um, you want you want us to talk about Demon Lord for the rest of the, uh, the I class? Because I love will to talk about my Demon Lord character. Is the thing I love my sad magician man who's definitely gonna die. Henry, he's not going to die. He's unkillable. <laughs> he's the he made an luckiest. unkillable character. He's, uh, he's become more and more useful as this game has gone on, which is nice. Whoops. Right. Um, well, I guess we're going to have Jenna on Drafi sometime. Okay, we got to think of a thing for Jenna to do. She's so knowledgeable on so many subjects. I know. Really like a maybe like a maybe maybe like a like a uh, describe a movie badly, but it's like horror movies or something. Two point know. perspective cubes, yes. If I didn't delete them, if I did, I will just redraw them. There you go. There they are. There they are. 
Oh, I should, we should just check the Drawfee Suggestions channel on the Discord, I guess, because there are episode ideas for specific guests in there. Okay. Well, great. Well, great. Well, well great. Love that. Love when people got the work done for us. Yeah. That's nice. That's like one of the best cheats we ever did was like, you tell us what the episode should be. <laughs> Hasn't that been the whole conceit of our show, technically? Yeah, I know. It's yeah. like <laughs> from the from its inception, it was like we don't we don't know what to do. You tell us. I can't think of what to draw. You tell me what to draw. Um. Oh, Punch Rock! I hope that this was helpful to you as someone who just started doing perspective. I'm sorry that I went a little quickly. I just wanted to cover the the basics of everything. Uh, when this vod goes up, I mean, you'll be able to watch it again. Uh, yep. Right after this, the is available yes. uh, to anyone here uh, at this at the tier, and then it becomes available to everyone a m yes. month after. So you can rewatch it at your own pace. But I hope that I was clear enough. Um, was this? Does this all make sense? I know the perspective is like super scary, but if you break it down to a uh, cube is not so bad. It's like perspective yeah. gets so much easier if you just commit to two vanishing points and you know exactly where those are and you know how to break it down into a cube and you know how to do a square in that perspective uh, because you can build off of that. Everything after that is just figuring out. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's really just like thinking through the process. So. Um, don't be so intimidated by it. It's a cool, it's a cool necessary part of art. Um, take it slow. It's not so bad. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, when in doubt, cube. just like break down, break down images of scenes you like. Yeah, So exactly. you can figure out how they did it. Cause that'll, that'll help. Watch the fall. Well. And just watch the fall. <laughs> fall and it'll teach you everything you need to know i really look at lee pace i really just look at lee pace i really want just to look at lee pace's face i want everyone to watch the fall for the sake of composition lessons because it's it really made everything just work in my brain for me uh, that's cool it taught me so much just watching it and then like looking at the shots they did there's this beautiful shot of um there are these two people in a boat and basically uh the shot is the the top of a building and it's like you have uh an arch here and they are like looking over a ledge uh no it was like that's what it was it was like the roof there was drawing a roof. scenes from the fall from memory yeah there was like a roof new drawfee that's challenge it was like the roof was pointing in this direction. And then like you had um, something else like in the, the thing, like breaking off a piece. And then like it just everything in the thing was pointing to these two people in a boat. It was the great. The thing in the thing. The thing in the thing. I just watch it. <laughs> it's so good. You'll see what I, you'll, you'll know you'll it know when it. you see it. Yeah, you'll you'll see the thing and the thing and the boat, and you'll be like, "That's what Julia was talking about." That's what I was talking <laughs> about. I think it's on YouTube. I think it's streaming on YouTube, and I think it's also on Amazon. But um, there you I go. remember so many this, shots. Uh, this draw class has been brought to you by The Fall, <laughs> and uh, everyone should watch Sing. it. Um, <laughs> I guess draw class is over. But thank you everyone for coming. Thank thank you to Nathan yet again for for coming in. Ugh. I, it's the best. I get to learn from from you. Yeah, what a treat! It's fun. It's fun, and it's just fun to hang out. It's fun to hang yeah. out and talk about art. Um, thank you again to all of you for subscribing uh, at this tier. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you. We hope that these draw classes uh, feel good and and worth it and and worth worth your time. I guess. And yeah. your patronage 
And to all of Thank you, you who so are watching much. this afterwards, um, uh, we appreciate you anyway for watching it. Hit the, and, uh, uh, you know, the bell. And consider, like and, and if you ever wanna, if you ever wanna watch live, you know, you can, you can always, you can always support us on Patreon. Support us on Patreon. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, be sure if you're doing some practices, I'd love to see what people are doing in the Drawfee yeah. Discord official, because yep. I'd love to see. We've got the people are up to the draw class, the draw class channel in there. Mm -hmm. It's always fun to go in there and see what yeah. people come up with. It's very cool. But uh, thanks again to everyone. I guess not happy. Ho well, happy holidays to everyone who's live. And we'll see the rest of you later. In the new year. In the new year. Oh, my God. Okay. Wow. I'm leaving. I'm sorry. Okay. Bye. Bye.